Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Elliott and I am a former midwife and lactation consultant and I am currently an epidemiologist uh, working with COVID-19 vaccine confidence. And I am excited to be here with Dr. Fiona Matatal, an OBGYN in Calgary, Alberta. And we are here to talk about COVID-19 vaccines and reproductive health. This video is part of a three-part series and today we are talking about postpartum health. So hi Fiona. Hey Stephanie. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Um, so as you know, having a baby is so intense and exhausting at the best of times. I've had two babies during flu season and both times I got really sick shortly after they were born. Um, so I just think about that so much with people giving birth um, during COVID. What might it mean for new families to get COVID-19? Great question. And, and I've had a few patients this last year who um, have had COVID um, in pregnancy, but also postpartum. And as you remember, and I, I remember too, having a new baby come into your world is, is hard. It's exhausting their sleep deprivation. And if you have any other health conditions going on at the same time, it it makes all of that even harder. What's particularly tough with COVID-19 is some of the health um, issues with it. So because it is contagious, um, if you do have the virus, there's worry about spread within the home. So you may not have people coming in as supports, whether that is, you know, a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, um, a doula, it really does limit um, people coming into that, that home environment for support. Um, but there's also some, you know, interesting challenges in terms of the health of that, um, of that new parent. Um, there could be some additional exhaustion because of the respiratory nature of the illness. So having troubles with breathing, having troubles with coughing, and as you and I probably both know, um, leaky bladders are very common um, after you've given birth and to have coughing on top of that um, can make what's already a not fun experience really quite miserable and uh, could be really tough on pelvic floor and even you know we don't think about the pelvic floor a lot in terms of covid but it's possible that that might take its toll as well I imagine that might also be a really big challenge if you um, happen to give birth by cesarean, that healing and recovery um, with, a, with a condition that causes pretty severe coughing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like something to be avoided for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so we know small kids aren't able to be vaccinated for COVID-19, um, little kids and babies. So what's the best way to protect our little ones from sickness with COVID-19? So whenever we have infectious diseases that um, we cannot vaccinate small children for, the best principles are to protect those people around that child to not bring that infectious disease into the home environment. And so we do this with other conditions. Um, you know, when you've got a new baby and someone comes to visit and has a cough or a sneeze, you probably wanna keep them away. Um, so the best thing you can do is to make sure the people in that environment are healthy and vaccinated. So with COVID-19 specifically, any older children in the house, any grandparents, parents who aren't carrying the pregnancy, should consider being vaccinated to protect that small child, whether it's the new baby or the two-year-old older sibling, to protect them. And then the best protection we actually have is vaccination for the, either the patient while they were pregnant or breastfeeding. Getting the COVID vaccine while pregnant or while breastfeeding does indirectly protect that, uh, that new baby because antibodies, which are produced by our bodies when we're vaccinated. That's what protects us from the virus. They go across the placenta, but also go through breast milk to protect that newborn child. And so our best fight for protecting small children and newborns is actually vaccination right now. Okay. Now, when you talk about um, antibodies crossing the placenta, mm -hmm. um, or passing through through breast milk. Is there anything in the vaccines that might pass through that people need to be worried about? 
That is a great question. And so with the uh, vaccines that we are using currently in pregnancy and breastfeeding, which is Pfizer and Moderna, those are mRNA vaccines. And what happens is our body actually manufactures the spike protein, which is that on the images, we all see that little red bump on the surface of the virus. Our bodies produce that little red bump and then our body responds to it. That little red bump does not make it across the placenta, it does not make it across the breast milk and components in the vaccine that help our bodies to make that also do not go across the, the placenta or breast milk. So the vaccine is very safe because it is not going through, it's indirectly protecting that newborn. Great, so just like when we have a cold, we make antibodies for our babies. Um, this is kind of the same thing. Exactly, but also there's another vaccine that we recommend in pregnancy and have for a long time, which is the pertussis or whooping cough vaccine. And in the same way we recommend pregnant patients have that vaccine in the third trimester to increase their antibodies so that that newborn is protected against whooping cough. So this is not a new principle. This is something we've done for a long time. That's great. So as a lactation consultant, I have heard dozens of times um, that people were told to stop breastfeeding because they're taking a certain medication and then only to look it at myself and see that it's perfectly fine during breastfeeding. Um, I have nursed two babies myself. I'm currently breastfeeding and I know that every time I'm going to take a new medication, um, I always look it up myself and I'm able to do that because of my professional background. But often providers err on the side of caution when it comes to breastfeeding. And um, we've heard a little bit about that with the vaccination too, um, where a healthcare provider might recommend against, um, against the vaccine during breastfeeding. Why might that be? You know, I wonder if those healthcare providers are erring on the side of caution, similar to what you've heard as a lactation consultant, where someone has said, oh, someone's on this medication, they can't breastfeed just because the default is to be careful. Um, and maybe they're just not keeping up on the information that is out there, that not only is the vaccine safe in breastfeeding, but it is actually recommended in breastfeeding. And so women should, women and um, men who are breast or chest feeding should definitely consider getting the vaccine if they already haven't and continue to breastfeed because you will be protecting that newborn with breast milk. Breast milk is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, great, well, this has been so fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience. Um, if people are interested in getting more information on these topics, what um, are some resources that they should check out that they can rely on? So I think if you're looking for online resources, the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada or SOGC have a great website helping educate patients um, about planning pregnancy, pregnancy and postpartum and COVID. Health Canada also have some great information on their websites. And as always, if you have specific questions, check in with your lactation consultant, your obstetrician or family doctor or midwife. These are great resources. The other one I'd like to add is the, um, it's based out of the US, but it's a really good resource, which is the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine. Um, and which is a great place to find evidence-based information about um, lactation and uh, various different issues. Thanks for the tip. I'll be using that one myself. <laughs> no problem. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Have a good day.